Hello everybody. We got Taffy hanging out in the background down there somewhere. Yeah, you might not be able to see her. But never fear. G is here. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a look at something an event that is coming up and it will not be coming up until 2024. <clears throat> but some folks have mentioned it to me on the channel. So I want to uh, take a little walk through the chart so that we can see it, the event, so we can see it energetically on paper because that's what astrology is. We see the energies on paper, in print, with our eyes. It's like seeing the invisible. So let's pull this chart up. But before, actually, before we get there, let's talk a little bit. Uh, let's see if this will work. It says Jupiter conjunct Uranus, right? Jupiter Uranus conjunction is how I worded it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're looking at Taurus energy. Let me mark this up a little bit here. Find my pen. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So we are going to, we're going to find the Taurus energy and we're going over here. You see it all? There's a whole lot, right? There's a lot in Taurus at this time. And by the way, when is this? That's a good question. <laughs> when is this? Let me take this and we'll go and put that there. And we have April 20th, April 20th, 2024. But I will just say now in advance that this is when it's an exact conjunction. You see, they're at 21 degrees and 49 minutes. 21 degrees, 49 minutes for Uranus, and 21 degrees, 49 minutes for Jupiter. So we have to understand what Jupiter is. What does it mean, Jupiter? And it's in the sign of Taurus. We need to know what the hell Taurus means. We got to know that too. We got to know what Uranus means. But if we thoroughly have already discussed Taurus, then we're good. Then we're only really talking about three different things, right? But we're going to go a little deeper. And I don't know if I'm going to do it here in this particular video, because obviously this is so far out that um, we're going to kind of start off with some of the basics. OK, so Taurus, Taurus, it's an earth sign. It's a fixed earth sign. It's our values. It's the creature comforts. It's the money. It's what I own. This is mine. I don't have my pen. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. This is mine. And so that's Taurus energy. What I own and what is mine. But it is not only that, it's values in general. So we think of, this may not be cash, but maybe I was given this gift. Maybe it was a gift. You know, maybe there's some sort of a, a value that I put on it that others may not right? There might be some sentimental value associated with this. Might have been a gift, right? So it can be things that we value, but only we value them. It can also be another unseen value because if only you value it, then well, <laughs> it's not something people are going to pay for. And it's not something that we would consider a value, like money in the bank value. But there can be other unseen values that we can't see and this is love venus rules the sign of taurus venus rules taurus so i want you to remember venus this is important because when we start diving into jupiter in taurus conjunct uranus in taurus venus will be a factor meaning where is venus in your natal chart because this will tell us more information this will give us more details of how to how to know what values specifically are we talking about? There will be specific values, and it has to do with where your Venus is located. But wait, there is more. It's not just about Venus. It's about Jupiter. It's about Uranus. 
And it's about what does Uranus, I'm sorry, what does Jupiter rule? Right. And knowing the sign that it rules and then finding that sign in your chart and the house number. Same with Venus. Finding where is Venus in your chart and the house number she sits in. Okay. And then the same with Uranus. What sign does it rule and what house does it sit in in your natal chart? So it's important. So if you don't have your natal chart and you need your natal chart, comment to me and let me know and I will take care of you. I will do whatever I can. We'll make sure that you get the correct natal chart, which by the way, if you go online and get a chart, depending upon where you live in the world, 99% of those charts are incorrect, depending upon where you live in the world. Okay. So some places it's okay. Some places it's not. But in particular locations, it will be incorrect 99.9% .9 of the time. So one of my passions has been to get you the correct chart. Now, we've got Jupiter at 2149. We've got Uranus at 2149. And look, we have white moon Lilith at 22. They're all in Taurus energy. So we have to really understand Taurus energy. We have to understand the meanings. When we say Earth and it's fixed Earth, it can literally be the planet Earth itself. When I say fixed Earth and we think about it in terms of who I am as in personalities, Taurus can be stubborn. It can be very stubborn. It doesn't like change. It wants things that are stable, things that don't change. Something that's been around for a while, it gets into a routine. Taurus has the ability to form habits very easily because it is all about, okay, we do this at this time. We do this at this day. You know, every Friday it's date night or whatever, right? Taurus likes the routine because it knows it can count on it. It considers a routine as, as being stable, okay? And so routines are the next earth sign after Taurus. So when you just study signs, you know, like as far as the elements, so like earth, and then you look at Virgo, routines, establishing daily routines, that's Virgo, another earth sign. This one's a little bit more flexible, right? Because it's like, oh, we got to work with the calendar and sometimes things change. And, and then we got to take into consider the weather, right? And how we feel. And so it, it learns to have some flexibility within that schedule. Whereas Taurus is like, if you make a date with a Taurus and you call them, say something happens and you're like, oh my God, I can't, I have to cancel. Like, they're probably not going to be real happy. <laughs> they're probably not. This is a strong energy for desire. Very much about desire and very fixed. Can be stubborn. And stubborn to a fault. Because, you know, sometimes the stick to the stubbornness is a great asset when you want to get something accomplished, right? It's like you begin the project and you can follow through on it. And it can also be very loyal, right? Some say, you know, I had a comment with somebody, one of the subscribers talking about, can you interchange stubborn, stubbornness with loyalty? And I can't remember, but I had said something in a video differentiating between stubbornness and loyalty. And, um, but they are similar, right? When you think about it, they are similar. And so that's why it's easy for Taurus energy to be like, but I'm okay with this. Like, this is familiar to me. I don't like the change, especially if it's happy. It's got like its food, the creature comforts, the temperature, the clothing, the food, the smells, the taste, the touch. Like, if all of those things are being given, if all of those things are being taken care of, it sees no reason to make a change, right? So sometimes Taurus energy can, 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 go big. And like, while well, Jupiter has been in Taurus, which it got there right in May of 2023. And it can exaggerate my values. It can exaggerate my stubbornness. It can exaggerate who and what I am loyal to. So Jupiter in Taurus is all about who and what we value. Not always the money in the bank, although it can be, but it can be desire energy and love energy. So many times, these are the people in our life that we love. And the main thing 
is also to make sure that we have the love factor for ourself, self-worth and self-value. That's going to be a big deal. Jupiter expands. And what about Uranus? What is Uranus going to do? Uranus represents something new. When Jupiter and Uranus touch, remember Jupiter adds to things. It can expand upon those things. So when we look at Uranian energy, it's all about new and exciting and different. New, exciting, and different. This is also that very creative energy of technology. Something that hasn't been done, something that's unconventional, that is cutting edge, Uranus. And then white moon Lilith, sweet white moon Lilith. She's like the good witch, right? I see the picture of the good witch. And then we've got black moon Lilith, interesting, in an earth sign. And this is at 18, right? So it's like training Jupiter. It's training Uranus. It's really something really stable, something very grounding. And it almost feels like, you know how we mentioned in May of 2023, like recently, right? Like a week ago when Jupiter got into Taurus, we had this rubber hitting the road type of thing where we had a plan, we had an idea, we got the money together and we were like, okay, we're getting on the road and we're going. Well, Jupiter is traveling, but it's like it gets in the plane and it goes. And if it doesn't do that, it's seeking, it's searching in some way. It likes knowledge, it wants to be smarter. So it's looking for wisdom and truth. That's Jupiter energy. I will add here also that Jupiter can be the judicial system and the justices and judges in general, but it can be foreigners, foreign lands, foreign languages. Now, if it is conjunct Uranus energy, something we haven't done before, Many people have been talking about, and on the channel, we've been talking about um, digital dollars. Digital dollars, um, what do they call them? CBDCs, right? And there might, there might be something here with this. Again, this is April of 2024. There might be something that, I dare I say, it literally becomes a thing. I don't you know, when we think about how something like this would actually occur, it takes lots of legislation, at least for the states. I'm in the United States. So so let's go beyond that, right? Well, we know Taurus is banking. We know Taurus is banking, right? So when I look at Jupiter, somebody who's in charge, somebody who is wiser, someone who can be the sage and the teacher, someone who thinks ahead of time, they're into the future, they are absolutely thinking about the forest as opposed to the trees. And Uranus, something we haven't technically, maybe we've technically done it, but this is something very new. And so if Jupiter touches that, it really expands upon this new thing. So now will this be a thing for you in your life? Where were this expansiveness and surprises, Uranus surprises, Jupiter, let's do this and let's go big or go home. Values, can this be a relationship? It can. Can this be money in the bank? It can. Can this be self-worth? It can. Where is the 21 degrees and 49 minutes in your chart? Technically, this is 22 degrees of Taurus. And white moon Lilith will be part of that, which is really, really beautiful. White moon Lilith energy. Let me just give you a little, a little peek from the software. White moon Lilith and Taurus. You are destined to walk away from earthly pleasures and treasures in favor of spiritual rewards. The delight of the five senses certainly holds their appeal, but you are interested in exploring a sixth sense. You may work with the earth's resources and help others to manifest their heart's desire. However, it is also possible that you shine a light on spiritual resources for others. So the white moon Lilith brings a very non-material, non-physical aspect to this story. 
And if you have something at the 22 degree mark, and we're going to go wider than that because Jupiter is not a fast mover and Uranus is a slow mover and so is white moon Lilith. So technically before April 20th, and I mean like April 10th, maybe 9th, maybe 8th up until now. So you could have an orb of at like 20 degrees. 20, 21, 22. And if you have multiple things there, you could even expand upon that orb. Now, here's some other things I want to look at in this chart without going super deep. We're just going to use red because it's easy to see. And what do we see here? We see Mars is at 22. That 22 degree Mars, that sends a sextile. It's sextile energy. And the sextile this is Mars in Pisces. So this is spiritual activities, spiritual action. Mars gets slowed down. It takes away its combativeness. It surrenders to Pisces. It loses its ability to, to wage war. It's, it becomes more about unity and understanding, meditation and prayer. So this is a nice exact sextile. You see that? Same degrees, nice exact sextile, 22 degrees to Jupiter and Uranus and white moon Lilith. That is very, very sweet. I also want to show you all the fiery energy. Look at the stellium, right? Now that we've done a video on stelliums on the channel, we've got a whole lot of stelliums going on here. And the stellium energy the story of the stellium. What is the stellium's story? It starts with Hygieia. And this is about health, the health of our body. Hygieia is about not good or bad health, but just what is the state of the health. And so it's my physical body, my actions, the freedoms of my body, my body autonomy, my independent actions of my body. We've got the North Node and a Mercury doing a retrograde. Venus at 19, and a Chiron return on the United States, natal Chiron in their fourth house. Feminine energy is highlighted here. Strong feminine energy is highlighted here. Pay attention to those degrees. See if you have something where the Mars, 22 degrees in Pisces, check out your Aries energy in your chart, check out the Taurus energy, see if you have anything in Virgo that creates a sweet trine at 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 degrees even, a sweet trine, and then Capricorn, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and look, Cirrus at 1950. So Jupiter and Cirrus would have been trining for the month of April and early on, right? And um, look for the sextiles too. They are 60 degrees away. So a 60 degree textile, sextile this way goes that way. And a 60 degree one from Taurus would be over here in the sign of Cancer. And it would be like at 20 degrees. We see we got Estrella at 17. So 20, same, same degrees, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. See if you have something there. Because then it would go and look like that right and um yeah also check the opposition to your taurus energy see if you have anything in scorpio and look we do we do opposing this big powerful stellium we have the part of fortune and now this part of fortune is technically not really here, because <laughs> this point moves fast in a chart. And this chart is just drawn up for April 20th, 2024. And for whatever reason, I have it at 820 at night. And this is where the part of fortune is at that time. It moves fast. Uh, let me, well, I know why I got it at this time. Oh, it's at this time because it's the time of the exact conjunction. So yeah, if you were to move the chart up by if you were to change the time by one hour, the part of fortune is already moved. But interestingly enough, when there's this exact conjunction here at those minutes, the part of fortune is here. And that, I think, is significant, especially if you have something in your Scorpio. Do you have something in Scorpio at 
21, 22, 23, 24, 20. Yeah. Give the orb of 20 degrees to 24 degrees. Okay. And that being that opposition, it's still Uranus energy sending a big shock and a big surprise over my values and our values. But it looks like it can be extremely beneficial unless you have something squaring. And that square would be coming. That square would come from Aquarius energy. And I'll draw that up real quick. Aquarius and Leo, to be exact. You see, that'd be a square. It would be more like that right there. Okay. And then that would make it difficult because then that, if you got something at both ends, that makes a T-square. You see that? That's what a T-square looks like. Okay. And so that can create stress and tension. All right. So if you've got any questions, you comment below. You need a chart, you comment below. If you don't know and you need to know, you comment below. Comment below. I will help you out in any way that I can. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.